Okay, let's see if we can wrap our project up. Most of our stuff is done. Our motor mount is done. We don't have the motor ready yet though. Here's what we're gonna do. We need to mount our collet, of course. They don't provide flat spots. So I colored this a little bit and while it was still assembled, I put it on here where I wanted it and I tightened the screws, you know, a couple times and pulled it off. And I don't know if you can tell, but where I put a little bit of that bluing compound on, I can see where those screws were hitting and that's where I want them. So I know I need to cut a flat spot to there, right? But I don't need to go a whole bunch more. There's no sense cutting it off if I don't have to. Think about it this way. If I cut a whole bunch of material off of here, what am I doing to the shaft? I'm imbalancing the shaft. So I want to cut as little as I can get away with. I want to be sure I go to there because then I know I have cut enough. A little goes a long way. I've seen, I've seen guys on flat, uh, on prop shafts and stuff, just take a ton of material away on their shaft. Um, somehow thinking that improves the, uh, the hold of the set screws. It really doesn't. If you think about it, uh, I have no idea where to put that where you can see down inside there. But if you just think about it logically, as you run the set screw in, especially if the set screw is short, and it should be, you don't want a whole ton of it sticking out. As you run it down in, I have no idea if you can see that. It's recessing here, and so we're actually biting less thread, plus you're dangling the end of the set screw out of the hole and that actually makes it easier for it to move. Not that it's really going to, but it just needs to be in there just a short ways, okay? And we're gonna Loctite this into place anyhow, not the whole shaft, I mean, not the whole collet, because that, that just, I mean, that, that's a reasonable idea if you're having difficulty making it hold, but it's just a real booger to get off that way. But we are gonna light Loctite the set screws themselves. However, we do need to cut flat spots here. I don't really want the motor filled with metal. So in my head, this idea was gonna work to protect it and cover it. And we'll see if it actually does work. Handy dandy little baggie. We'll put a little cut in it and press over it. And so far, I like how that looks. All right, let's see how it goes here. I'm just gonna use a regular Dremel cutoff wheel. And hit it. Kind of judge the depth by the width that you see there. And we are going to go slightly more. Can you see that? Isn't very much, but if anything, it'll be a slightly concave groove, which suits me just fine. Boy, that set screw will sit down in there, and even if it tried to, to ride out, it would have to walk up as we go. And so I think we're in good shape. We'll do a quick test run, because I want to see these set screws. Oh, it'd be kind of neat if I saw them go in close to flush there. I don't know if they really will. For no reason other than just I like things to look real, uh, real groovy, like it was done on purpose. Huh? Huh? Come on. Okay, that's gonna work fantastic. It looks like it's a long ways out. There it's not. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. All right, now, next thing we're gonna do Remember I told you about the water jacket? 
that it's a 40 millimeter water jacket and it's a 39 millimeter can and that uh, Bill at Rattlesnake RC gives us the solution gives you the correct o-ring to take up the difference and now looking at these I see they fit in this slot pretty snug so I don't really know how well this fatter o-ring is going to work out in there but we're going to do it oh hey we're not done here yet let's pull this one out these are a five millimeter base here and so it's worthwhile to use a, a decent wrench because they are just a little bit snug they have been loctited in and we're going to loctite them when we put the new ones in okay good this one's going no problem the first one was a real bugger and i was scared i was thinking boy i should put some heat on it and then that'd make it come right out <laughs> but sacrificially for your sake i decided to just go ahead and spin it anyway and see if it was going to break and then I could warn you if that was the case, and it did not. We got a lot of excess on her. Look at that. I dinged the anodizing. Now I gotta throw this away. <laughs> Just kidding. We'll be fine. Let's put them in right now. We're gonna use a little red. Are we gonna use red? Yeah, I mean it on these. So I'm gonna put a little bit of red Loctite on them. These are my new ones. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's awesome. And I remember we don't want to tighten these super tight. Why? Because the material is super thin. If we go super tight and super thin, breaky breaky. Very sad. That would be a sad day. Uh oh, look at that. That might hit. Ah, it did not. Look at that. What a beast. Uh, these are bigger. These are one quarter. Probably can't get it all the way on there now. Let's see. Eh, kind of, sort of. I'm going to pull a little bit. Mmm. Hey. All right. Golly. That's the way it should have been. It is now. Y'all. Look out. I hope you can see this. As always, I'm just guessing. Okay, we're gonna pull even a little bit more on this one. All right, that felt good. Boy, that hit tight. Felt like it sealed really good. We could even vacuum test this later once it's assembled and make sure. Looks good inside. They're not exposed, not extending. Okay, O-rings. How do we get these out? One thing you're not gonna wanna do is grab a sharp pick or a screwdriver and dig at it, because if you scratch the housing, you'll give water a path to leak. But, uh, so how else are we going to do it, though, you might wonder. Hello. I might have to dig at it with something. There we go. There we go. I see it moving. Ah. Okay. These are cool. I don't want to stick a pick into them because I don't want to ruin them. I might have. Yeah, see, i got to figure it out now. Run a fingernail into it, pull, and it come right out. Okay, the new ones. Here's what we're going to do with the new ones. <clears throat> now, Bill warned me ahead of time. He said, this is going to press on there real hard. And so you got to lube it. What you don't want to do with regular rubber, which these certainly do appear to be, is you don't want to put oil on them because oil will attack the rubber and over time you'll regret it. What you can use is a silicone, almost any silicone based grease. Uh, dielectric compound, the type we're going to use in all of our electrical connections would work. This happens to be plumber's grease. You can get this at Ace Hardware. That's why I thought I'd show this one. Waterproof grease. Isn't that awesome? And we're going to slick these things up all the way around because I want them to be able to slide up into this groove. Well, let me check the fit. I'm just assuming that the thicker one won't go in the groove very well. Yeah, it doesn't want to go in that groove real well. So we're going to slick it all up really good. And that should help it not only go into that groove, but also slide over the can. See what happens here. Very slippery. Okay, we're gonna try to press it into that groove some. I'm learning this the same time you guys are, so don't expect miracles. Okay, that seemed to work. Okay. Got a fly buzzing around my head, can you hear? <laughs> it's that time of year where they're starting to change a little bit. Flies aren't sure what to do. They're trying to get in my house. They're getting in my shop. Got the door open today. Look at that, a little breeze. 
This whole place has been on fire. I live in southeastern Washington state. I don't know if it's national news, but Oregon's been on fire, California's on fire, Washington's on fire, and all the smoke blows right up here into what they call the Columbia Basin where I live. And it's been just dead stagnant and full of smoke for weeks. Now, I don't mean to be complaining. I know there's many, many, many that have it much worse than I do. They're actually dealing with flames. Smoke is one thing, flames are bad. It's kind of like dealing with electric boats, I guess, right? <laughs> so uh, anyway, prayers go out to all those who are suffering, have suffered, and have lost property and lives. And let's hear it for the firefighters and police officers, dudes. Come on, respect the authorities. Those guys put it on the line every day. My brother's a firefighter. I am one proud dude. Okay, now here we go. We're gonna have the wiring coming this way if we're looking towards the front of the boat, as we would be, because here's where the collet goes on. And I've already determined that I want the water lines not straight up, but slightly over to the left. And I'm hoping this thing still moves around a little bit once I get it on there. I've put a little bit of that silicone on the body here. There certainly is some on the rubbers there. Bill said that it can tend to roll out of the groove, so we do need to watch that. I'm just gonna work it around a little bit, see if I can get it to start. Come on, baby. Don't let me down, ooh, there we go. Okay, we're on. And I can see that the O-ring is still in the groove. That moves pretty easy. I might not feel the same way once the second half goes on. I want it to land over here somewhere. All right, let's see what happens. I'm not really sure how to go about pressing this part now. Uh, firmer bench. Look at this, all this stuff. We gotta put all that in that boat soon. Soon. I don't know which video I'm going to upload when, but what I can tell you is that the boat is pretty well ready to go. I'm trying to find a handy spot to set this while I press. There we go. Come on. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Uh, 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 uh. All right. And it still moves. Okay. My hands are all sticky. I'm going to pause this. You're not going to know it, but I'm going to wash my hands. Okay, next thing. Front mount. Remember, we're flipping it over. Wiring goes that way. So the mount's going to go on like that. I want it to stay. So a little dab of blue Loctite. Little dab will do you. Smear that around a little bit. Okay. Let's see, this one? No, this one. Okay, threads over there, mount over here. I'm going to say it was that hole, no, right there. It's kind of nice, it runs out to the end of the slot, so I don't have to worry about the positioning side to side. I'm going to give her a little pull, a decent little pull, but you know, these are pretty tiny little suckers and we could yank the threads right out of that case pretty easy. It's the beauty of Loctite. That'll save the day for us. I think water line's somewhere over about there. This one goes this away and positions into our mount. Now, what we're gonna do right now is not put it in yet because we're gonna deal with the wiring. But what you have is a super cooling motor to go with our super cooling rudder. If you haven't seen that video, go find it. Uh, and one good way to do that is subscribe to my channel, click the videos button, and they'll all line up for you. Go find them. But doesn't that look awesome? That is ready to go. Nice and cool. Fast. Mm. Almost done.
Let me show you. Rudder's done, interior's done, ready to assemble. It's laying on its side right now because I just put in, this is an extension wire because of where we needed to move the servo to. Used a little goop, stick it up above. Much quicker than silicone, not so sticky, nasty, crazy as silicone. Plus, this is amazing. Ah. All right, almost ready to assemble. Coming right back.